pleased to have at this table Dr. Tara Cronin, a pediatric ophthalmologist. Thank you so much for being here. And I wanted to have you here because I want to know what's new about babies and what research is showing. And how do you know when a baby or a child can't really see what they're supposed to be seeing? So tell me how it is that we find out that a child cannot see in, in an infant stage. Well, as an infant, as a newborn, they do get screened in the nursery. So the pediatrician does check the eyes as soon as they're born. And what the most important thing at that point is to get a red reflex. Okay, that Which is, means? That is the, when you shine the light in the eye, you'll see a red reflex like you do in the old cameras where you get that um, red eye in the cameras. Now that we don't have, you know, we have red eye reduction now, but we used to have that red eye reflex. So that tells you right away that, that tells that you it's right good. away that there's a clear that there's not something in the way, like a cataract, for instance, that a baby can be born with. Wow. Okay. When do you know? You take the baby home, and a couple months later, I mean, how do parents know that that child maybe isn't focusing like they should be? Well, the most important clue would be any kind of eye turn, meaning that the eye, instead of being straight, might drift inward or outward. That can be normal in the first few weeks, but after two months of age, that's not really normal anymore. And that would be a reason to want to bring the child into the pediatrician or the pediatric ophthalmologist to check out and see why that eye perhaps is not seeing as well. Now there's different things that we can do with that. Um, one of my children had this and they, a patch went over her mm -hmm. eye, she strengthened the other eye and then everything was okay. Yeah. Um, what new things? So, you know, there's two things associated with the, you know, eye turn and the patch. So the, the eye turn itself is called strabismus. Okay, that's actually from the Greek word um, to squint. It's always okay. a Greek word, right? It's, there's always a Greek <laughs> word, right? And so um, a lot of times, you know, you will see a kid squinting an eye, which is another clue that they might not be seeing as well. And what you're talking about is patching. So for the eye turn, that's a clue that something's wrong, but to fix that, that actually usually needs either glasses or surgery, okay? For the vision, which is the most important thing, that needs sometimes glasses, sometimes patching, or instead of patching, sometimes, as you know, it was probably challenging to do the patch at some times. So we can also use an eye drop called atropine, okay? Is that, this all fairly new? This is not that new. What, okay. what might be new on, you know, and exciting is that um, we are part of our practice called the Eye Care Group. is part of um, a National Institute of Health group called um, PEDIG, which is a pediatric eye disease investigator group. And that involves all of the pediatric ophthalmologists who want to participate um, throughout the country and actually even throughout the world participate in some of these studies, okay, um, where we learn about common everyday eye diseases like amblyopia or decreased vision in one eye that you have to do a patch and mm -hmm. that's how they figured out how old can we patch um, a child, how old is it not worth it to do it when they're 13 and then we find out yes you can get some improvement and does, that's kind of new. Does um, it help Does it help the vision if, if you know right away that there's something wrong to get them into glasses or to do surgery or to do the drops? Yes, the like sooner the better and as, as soon as you can get that child in glasses if they need it and patching um, the better because we know from those studies that the sooner we treat the better off they are and some kids do great they do phenomenal even though they started off with very poor vision and eye if we can get to those kids early then we can have great results. And they get used to glasses and they go around sort of oh, their head. Yeah, they're... Let's show this patient of yours um, who is adorable and she has these glasses. Now I've seen these now for babies and yes. they're refining them. Tell, tell me about these glasses. So they have a couple of different glasses for babies. This particular frame I really like, it's called Miraflex frames. Um, and there's a bunch of different frames out there, but I like them because they have a nice strap around the back, like you were mentioning. Um, they are kind of rubbery, so uh -huh. you can 
you know, destroy them, run the car over them, they're still okay. Um, and I find that they fit very well on the noses because babies, as you can imagine, have these small, tiny noses. And, um, you know, in terms of how do we keep up glasses, well, they're kept up by the back, the ear pieces, and the strap, not the nose pieces. So these are very comfortable, um, very durable. They're made outside the country. I think they're made in London or somewhere yes, else. Yes, I think you're right. I think, and then, you know, but there's a couple of different brands too uh -huh. out there, and there's actually even um, this brand now, but also a brand called Specs for Us is especially tailored to small noses, like for instance, Down syndrome patients um, that frequently need glasses. So there's a lot of glasses out there that are very comfortable for kids. Um, and they actually even make them for adults too. <laughs> and some of us should wear those too. <laughs> exactly, they have the, the they're in every color the imaginable. So we've we've seen, or maybe some of us have seen these videos on YouTube where the glasses go on babies, yep. and they're pretty little, six months, maybe nine mm -hmm. months, and you can see that all of a sudden oh, yeah. they can see. Can can you give me some stories about that? Sure. So we just um, looked at that picture of this adorable little girl um, named Bryn, and she. Um, at her one year appointment got a vision screening um, and the vision screening was done by something that's relatively new we were talking about new and exciting things in pediatric ophthalmology so um, a photo screener they've been out for a while but they keep updating them they now can get a general idea of what a baby's prescription would be like and if it fits a certain guideline that's threshold the pediatrician will refer them to us. So even before that time, the parents were pretty sure something was going on with the mm -hmm. vision um, because this little girl was not really reaching for her toys. She would cry if a toy was right in front of her as if she didn't see it. Um, and as soon as they were referred to me, we found out that she was truly um, like the photo screener said very nearsighted. And you mentioned new vision screeners. Yes. What, what does it look like? I mean, what is it that you're doing? Well, the there's all different kinds, uh -huh. um, but the nice thing about this is that um, a lot of the vision screeners now, they look almost like, I'd say, a, like a little camera or, um, you know, I don't want to say gun, but they look like a little laser that you uh -huh. would have the baby look at. And sometimes they have a smiley face or something fun for the child to look that at. they'll play at or try to touch. Something like that lights up so that the baby will look towards them. And then you could not have to cram a little baby's head into um, an autorefractor, which I don't know if you've ever been to the eye doctor, but they have you put your chin on a oh, chin Oh yes, once a year. Yes, a little infant's <laughs> not gonna um, want to do that. So this is great, it's portable, um, it catches their attention and it's fast. And it is pretty accurate in terms of when it gives a referral, we're finding that um, you know, they are very accurate in terms of what we get in the office through a different method of testing the vision. Why did you go into this field? Well, I love, I always loved kids. I loved babysitting when I was a young um, adult and, and I really wanted to go into pediatrics when I decided to go into medicine. Um, and then throughout medical training, I fell in love also with surgical procedures and fixing things, um, and yet I also love talking to people. So it was a great mixture of the two, and when we look into the eye, we can really give clues to the whole body, what's going on. And you know, when you look inside the eye, it's beautiful. You're seeing um, you know, all vessels and the parts of the brain called the optic nerve, and it's sometimes you know, wonderful to make a diagnosis in someone that otherwise would go years um, before that clue was found. You know, so many people say, oh, I haven't had my eyes checked in years. But what you just said is it's a window into vessels, what's going on in your yes. in your body, yep. not just the eye, it's yes. the whole body. That's why you should go once a year. You should. Give me an idea of the mistakes that parents make with kids. What, how do they make a mistake? Not get to you soon enough? Give me an idea for, for folks that will be listening to this who have young children. So for parents, I think the important things to remember are, number one, an eye turn, like we talked about in the very beginning stage, is the first Almost couple like the cross weeks. Side, right? Yes, the crossing or drifting out, either one of those 
conditions, that's not normal after two months of age. Two to three months of age that I should not be turning anymore. Um, and, you know, at least constantly, okay? It's okay to, when they're tired, have a little bit of a eye turn, but constant eye turn after two months of age is not normal, okay? And the other thing to note is the visual behavior. Like we were talking about that other family, they, they did notice something was wrong. Number three would be um, if there's someone in the family, the immediate family that has an eye condition, a lot of these conditions are, are seen in the children or other siblings. And you know, in that case, maybe we were a little late getting to the eldest sibling, but please don't wait for the youngest. The younger, the better. The treatment is you know, very good. We've done lots of studies to show that we can get good vision in an eye um, that is termed lazy eye, or, which I don't like to use that name, but an eye that is amblyopic or not seeing as well. As we look at our little Bryn again, yes. how has her world changed since she's wearing these glasses? So um, the parents reported, so mom said as soon as she put on the glasses, immediately she smiled, she reached for toys, she no longer cried when a toy was within reach. Um, and you know, soon after she started walking. Um, so she just, they said a 180 degree turn. So they, they were just so happy with the, the brin in the glasses that was seeing so well. And um, you know, it, it's a, a beautiful story. Well, thank you for sharing your stories with us. Oh, Dr. Tara so Cronin, welcome. thanks so much. You're so welcome. When one they send, who is this girl I spend all night kissing? And if one was right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. Across the keys of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Need to keep locked in the grocery store of my mind. Just the same time, I skip right ahead to the nice ride.